Hi, my name is Sarah Preston, and I am an integrative health practitioner and mama for teens. And I actually, my job is to help women to gain energy and get strong and lean and healthy as they move into the second half of their life. But also, I'm a mom of teens, and I have uh, one in college, two in high school, and one in eighth grade. And I think that I want to use this YouTube channel to also really just like connect with you guys on a normal life level. I'm going to share a lot of things that have to do with health and fitness. Check out my other videos that I've done on perimenopause and belly fat, and I do workouts and all that kind of stuff, but I want to keep it real and have conversations here with you about life. And I also know a lot of you follow me over on Instagram, Sarah Preston Healthy Living, and I don't want it to ever seem like I have it all together either. I mean, obviously on Instagram, we come up, usually we show like our best selves, right? We come on when we're in a good mood, when we're, you know, when things are, we talk about, I always try to be positive because I want to bring, I know there's a lot of negativity on social media and I just really want to bring a lot of positivity. And so, um, I always do that, but I want to keep it real too. Like, I want you guys to know that I'm struggling with perimenopausal symptoms. I have, you know, heavy periods and mood swings and irritability and things like that. And I also have teenagers, which can lead to a lot of worry and stress. So I have been wanting to share this story with you guys because it was too long to share over on Instagram. Um, we had kind of a wild night on Friday night. <laughs> And, you know, I was really like worked up about it on Saturday and it's kind of died off a little bit. So maybe you won't think it's a big deal, any of this, but at the time for me, it was a big deal. And I stewed about it and I thought about it and, you know, do you run like things over in your head a million times? I don't know if you do that, but I just like kept thinking about the situation and like, what should I say to my daughter about it? And what should I do? And you know, how, how should I react and what's the right step as a parent? You know, it's like, we're going through all of this just blind, you know, it's like, we don't know what to do. And so my, so let me give you some, some background. So my daughter is 15. She does not have her license yet. And, um, she's one of the younger ones. So she doesn't get it until later in the year. Whereas my older two boys, they were the older ones in their class. So they always had their license first. So they always were the drivers when they went anywhere. And they're both very good drivers, cautious. Um, and I never, you know, worried too much about them being reckless or anything like that. So she, but she has to ride with other people. I mean, we like her school is downtown. We live in the suburbs. Um, so while she rides with her brother a lot, sometimes she has to ride with friends too, because they have practice after school, but it's not at school. We have another facility where they go to practice. So they have to get a ride to that facility. And I'm, I'm picking up my eighth grader, so I can't be like in two places at once. So they have to get rides with other kids. And, you know, if they're going, a lot of them, they want to go get something to eat after a basketball game or whatever. And so there are times when she's riding with other kids, which doesn't make me like, I don't like that idea, but it's just, it's just the reality of how things are. So I'm always like, who are you riding with? You know, I, but you don't know what the, what kind of a driver those kids are. And the fact is that 16 year old kids are the most dangerous drivers because that, and that's why their insurance is the highest because they get in the most accidents. So it's really scary. It's really scary. So anyway, so she's at the basketball game. She calls me and says, can I have some friends over after the game? I said, how many? Because I know some situations with parents where they got into a hundred kids at their house and had to like kick everybody out. So she's like, oh, just like 15. I'm like, okay, fine. So um, she's like, but we're going to get food first and then we'll be back. I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting there, you know, kind of waiting for them to show up. And she's like, okay, we're picking, I'm with, she calls me and she's like, I'm with Brody or somebody and I'm picking up joey and jack and i don't know whatever their names are she's with some boys and she's like and then we'll be over okay i really want her riding with boys but that's how it is so anyway um as she 
starts walking in the door, she's, I can hear, you know, hear them or whatever. I'm just sitting in the family room. And she's like, mom, someone's in our driveway, mom, someone's in our driveway. And I was like, okay, who is it? I thought it was like one of her friends. She's like, someone's in our driveway, mom, come here. So I like came over there and some big truck, like an F 150. I don't even know trucks, but like big, huge truck was in our driveway. It's dark out. Cause it's, you know, seven or eight o'clock at night, whatever time it was. And, um, some guy is walking up my sidewalk, you know, he's got a hat on, he's a big burly guy, um, tough looking guy, you know, driving a truck. Like he looks, he looks tough. Like <laughs> he was kind of scary. And he's like walking up my sidewalk and he's like, is there an adult here? And I was like, yeah, I'm right here. And he's like, he's like, uh, who drives that Jeep out there? Who drives that Jeep? And I was like, looked at the kids. I was like, does one of you drive that Jeep? And they're like, yeah, he drives that Jeep. And, um, and I said, I said, it must be one of these kids. They're not, they're not my kids, but this is who my daughter was writing with. They're not my kids. Um, but one of them drives the Jeep, Jeep. Why? And he's like, starts using the F word, he starts going off about how he's like, they were driving so fast down this road. And then they were driving side by side, you know, next to this other car. And they, it was bl a blind hill. They were coming up. He's like, do you know that we had some high schooler killed on this road up here a couple of weeks ago, which is true. There was a high schooler, a, I don't know, I think a senior, I don't know the exact details. A high schooler from real close by was getting her mail and another high schooler from the same school hit her and killed her just a, like a month ago. So he, I see where he's coming from. And he was very upset saying that the kids were driving recklessly. And he's like, I swear you mother eppers <laughs> if if you ever kill one of my kids i'm coming after you he's like i'm gonna call he's like you need to call their parents and tell them how they were driving and my daughter's over there going no it wasn't us it wasn't us and i was like so i just wasn't saying anything to this guy because i don't like the confrontation i was a little bit scared my husband was upstairs but he wasn't coming to my rescue or anything i was like I understand. I said, yeah, that's, that doesn't sound safe. And I mean, I was like thinking this guy was going to like grab his gun and, and he, shoot us because he was so upset. He was like, um, I followed the, the forerunner that you were driving next to. And I was going to pull that kid out of uh, that person out of the car and kick their, you know what, but I didn't because I saw that it was a teenager and I was like, okay. Um, I don't know who, who the forerunner is, but I was like, I'll definitely talk to the kids. He's like, you need to call their parents. They don't deserve to be on the road. And so he was just like basically cussing me out. So I was like flustered from that. I was like, oh my gosh, what just happened? What am I supposed to do? So he gets, he's like, I live right up here and I'm watching these kids and whatever. So I was like, trying to take a deep breath. So he goes and leaves and then he comes back and comes around and I think he took a picture of the license plate of the kid's car. So I told the kids, I was like, you guys need to drive carefully. I said, it is not a joke to screw around with cars, you know? And Kelsey's like, my daughter, she's like, it was not us. She's like, we were sitting in the street waiting for so-and-so to get here um, for like five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever, before that guy even came. She's like, she has to, he has the wrong car. And so, you know, you want to believe your kids. Like I do, I do want to believe my kids, but I also, I mean, the, the boys, the three boys were silent, never said a word. Actually, one of them was recording the whole thing on his phone in his pocket. <laughs> I saw the video later. Um, you want to believe your kids, but also you want to be a little skeptical of your teenagers. I feel like they have maybe have a tendency to like lie. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying she was lying, but the boys didn't say anything. They were just sitting there. And she was like, it wasn't us. It wasn't us. We would never do that. That's so dangerous. So I don't know. I don't know if they were doing it or not, but it's scary if they were doing it. I don't want her in the car with them, you know? So I took it as an opportunity to talk to her the next day. And okay, 
we can get to that. So I took an opportunity to talk, talk to her the next day about it because, you know, it's like one mistake and something really bad can happen. So I told her, you're not riding with the boys and you do not need to be riding with the boys. I think the boys in that class have an, a, kind of a reputation for not being like the safest drivers. I don't know. My, you know, you see teenagers driving, sometimes they are driving reckless. Um, but anyway, it's kind of hard because again, they have to, they have to go places and you don't know how good of drivers the people are that they're driving with. Um, so I took it as an opportunity to like talk to her about, I mean, it's not her fault if they were driving recklessly, but again, she's in the car with them and it's her safety too. So I don't know if you guys have any like suggestions on how you handle that. I would love for you to comment below because I just like, I didn't really know what to do, but I was really shaken up by that guy cussing me out. And I mean, I see where he's coming from and hopefully he like scared the boys a little bit maybe. So if they were driving recklessly, maybe they won't do it again. But, um, that was wild. Like I, I was scared. I was like scared. So anyway, um, so that's just like the first thing that happened on Friday. So I was still, I was kind of like amped up from that. So I was trying to like relax, whatever, you know, all the kids get here, they're downstairs, they're being loud, whatever. Um, we're just kind of sitting around watching TV, whatever, reading my book. And all of a sudden we hear a crash and glass shattering in the basement. I was like, oh my gosh, last time these kids were here, they broke our, our shades that go on our window. Like the, they broke off the thing that pulls it. I know things are accidents. So we, my husband and I go running downstairs, the kids disperse. Like two of the girls were in the workout room, hiding basically behind my little box jump. <laughs> All the other kids were in the storage room. Kelsey was, my daughter was cleaning up the glass. I was like, don't cut yourself. A huge, I have this like huge clock on the wall and that I've had of course forever. And somebody must have knocked it off the wall somehow. No one would admit to it. I mean, I wasn't asking anybody, but my daughter was like, who did this? And no one, of course, no one would admit to it. And I get that accidents happen, but like, why are you being so rowdy that something like that has to happen? You know, I don't know. I just, I mean, I guess there's worse things. They could have been doing like drugs or something, <laughs> which I was watching for that too, because I have heard of that happening in other people's houses. So when I went down there, the place is a mess. Um, I had got, I've got, I got that new tonal, which is not cheap. And it was on, somebody had been using, I was like telling my daughter, please don't mess with my workout equipment. Like, I don't want anything else getting broken. So of course, you know, the thing that for me was like, no one apologized. No one was like, I'm sorry. I, it was my fault. I accidentally knocked it off the wall. I would have been like, okay, no problem. Just be careful next time. You know, it's like no one was respectful. They're just not respectful of other people's houses, which I think it's the boys. I don't know. My older two boys didn't have this problem, but they also didn't like to have people over as much because they knew stuff like this would happen. And <laughs> so they, you know, they know how rowdy some of those kids and boys can get when there's a bunch of them together. So that's why, I mean, I want my kids to want to have friends over because I feel like at least if they're at our house, I kind of know what they're doing. But at the same time, I'm not in for this like rowdy, crazy, you know, throwing stuff, stuff getting broken. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. It's just, it's something replaceable. Nobody got hurt, thankfully, you know, but it's like, be respectful when you're over at people's houses. So Finally, all of them left, some left earlier, but all of them left by like 1115, which if you're, first of all, in this state, if you are 16, you have to be off of the road by 10 o'clock. So I'm not sure how all these kids are able to stay out until like 1130 or 1145. <laughs> it's like literally against the law. And I make my kids follow those rules, but it's really hard when other parents don't make their kids follow those rules. So Anyway, they finally left, which is fine. It wasn't that late. We finally get to bed about 11.45, 12 o'clock, whatever. And they fall asleep. And I wake up in a, out of a deep sleep at 1 a.m. And you know how when you wake up, you're like, 
why did I just wake up? What did I just hear? And then um, I laid there for a second. I was like, did I just hear pounding? I thought I just heard pounding. So I lay there for a second. Sure enough, I hear someone is pounding at our front door at 1 a.m. Then they're ringing the doorbell. Ring, 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 ring. I mean, I've got like kids sleeping. My husband and I are sleeping. So I wake up my husband. I'm freaking out because my older son, who's a senior, was spending the night at somebody's house. He was at someone's house and then they were driving at midnight. They were, you know, going to the other to where he was going to spend the night. And I went to bed at like 1145 after I texted with him. What time are you leaving? What time are you going to this kid's house? He's like 12 o'clock. Okay. So you wake up at 1 a.m. I mean, the worst things are running through my head. Like he got in an accident and the police are here to tell us. I mean, that was like my first thought. And then I thought somebody might've been breaking in, but I'm like, why would they be ringing the doorbell? And then I thought that guy came back that was cussing me out before. I was like, maybe he's back. I don't know. So I like wake up my husband who's in a dead sleep. I'm like, someone's at the front door. He's like, what? I'm like, somebody's at the front door, but look out the window before you open it. Don't just open the door. I knew he was kind of, you know, kind of out of it from being asleep. So they're like pounding, pounding, pounding. I'm like, what is going on? So um, he goes over to the door and he opens it and he's, our front door is broken. So he had to go to the side door and I just hear him like say something and come back. So I'm like looking out the bathroom window, trying to see like, who's out there, what's going on. There's just one car out in the, in the, um, street. My daughter like comes down cause the dog woke up and, um, turns out it was some kids and they were some high schoolers and they were like, we're here for the party. And my husband's like, what? And they're like, oh, is the party over? He's like, yeah, this is 1 a.m. And they're like, okay. And they like go get back in their car and they leave. I was like, the party? First of all, did someone tell them there's a party here? And, you know, a lot of these kids, which I don't, I don't like my kids to do it, but they can like track each other on Snapchat. So sometimes if they see like a bunch of people are at one house on the snap map, they will like go to that house, but who's out at one in the morning? Like, why are these kids allowed to be out at one in the morning? I mean, it could have been older kids. It could have been seniors or whatever. I don't, I, we didn't recognize who it was. I don't think it was any of my kids' friends, but I think there were some other dances for some other schools going on le- that night, but why are these kids allowed to be out at 1am? And would you show up at someone's house, see that there's no cars there and go pounding on their door at 1am thinking there was a party there? I'm just like, what is going on? What is going on in the world? And am I the only household that's like not allowing this kind of stuff? I don't know, but I was glad no one was hurt or anything, but that freaked me out. So then my heart is like beating so fast. I was like hard to get back to sleep. So that was like, it was like the craziest night. So I was talking to the kids about it the next day. I'm like, you guys pick your friends wisely you know, like one decision can really just like mess up your life and you have to decide who you want to hang out with and the choices that you want to make because there's clearly kids who are not making the best choices. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I think raising teens is harder than when they were toddlers. Like give me the runny noses and the colds and the refusal to take a nap over worrying about if they're in car accidents or if they're doing things they shouldn't be doing or if they're safe or, oh my gosh. So anyway, I don't like drama. I like things to just be like very, you know, even keel, have fun, don't get into any trouble, be home at a reasonable hour, uh, get your sleep. Um, I did not get very good sleep that night, needless to say. Uh, but anyway, that was what happened with us. And this was all just in one night. I'm not having any more parties though. I tell my daughter, I'm like, if you want to have a couple people over, or if you want to have girls over, but we're done with the boy, girl, 20 people. I just, I can't deal with it. (laughs) It's just too much for me. I don't know. Maybe you guys think I'm crazy. Um, and maybe this is like normal occurrence at, you know, at your house, but I don't know. It's hard. So 
let me know what thoughts you have or if you've had anything similar happen. I know some of you guys were already sending me messages like, you know, of things that have happened to you. So I would love to hear so that we all know that we're in this together, um, that we're not alone and we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it. I always think like if we, they can get through high school <laughs> alive and not in trouble and, or maybe it's through college because I worry about my college age son too. So, all right, that's it for now, guys. I'll have another episode next week. Thanks so much for hanging in here with me and have a great week.